everybody. Today we will be talking about evaluating educational websites. My name is Dylan Porter. I am a teacher and educator. Uh, love educational technology and a huge proponent of educational technology. This presentation is going to talk about some of the ways we can prepare our students and not even just our students but ourselves to find websites and evaluate them and make sure they're actually providing uh, educational content. So why do we evaluate educational websites? Number one, students across the country have access to the internet within the school setting. This is now the norm. Students have access to the internet and usually have access to some sort of device that allows them to get online. Hundreds of millions of documents are available across the web and many of these documents and web pages have not been vetted. Therefore, we don't know if that information on there is credible. Web pages and documents can contain factual inaccuracies and sometimes even outright disinformation. And it's very important to be able to discern that. Therefore, digital literacy and critical evaluation skills are needed in the year 2018 for both educators and their students. So what should educators and students look for when evaluating websites? Number one, look for bias. Does the website use persuasive language instead of a more neutral language or tone? Are they trying to sell you something? Jerry-built websites are also a dead giveaway. Uh, does the website seem cheaply put together? Are there graphics, spelling, and grammar issues with the website? If so, then more than likely or not, that website has not been produced correctly, and therefore that information may not be that accurate. Citations. Does the website feature citations from reputable sources? Does it tell you where it's getting its information from? How up-to-date is the website? Is the website current? Was it made in 1998 or was it made in 2018? What month was it made? In? Actually, you know, if you're really getting specific, what, what hour was it? Was it last updated? So it's important to be able to know when it was last updated. And finally, the authority. Where is the information coming from? Who is the source? Check the domain. Maybe it's a .gov, maybe it's a .org. Those sometimes are going to be a little bit more reputable than your standard .com. How do you teach website evaluation in your classroom? Well, one way you can teach website evaluation is using the CRAAP method, the CRAAP method of source evaluation can help middle and upper grade students determine website credibility. And these things kind of relate to what we were just talking about, currency, and the timeliness of the information, when was the information produced, the relevance, how does it relate to your needs, the authority, where is the source, the accuracy, how reliable is it? How truthful and how correct is the content when you when you go and you do some double checking on that? Uh, and what is the purpose? Why was the website created? Some different resources here are on the right. These resources you can use uh, to help you kind of understand whether or not uh, a website meets the crap uh, criteria. So go ahead, check these out on your own. We have a great video that's going to be used with students on from Gulf Coast State College. Very simple. Students will understand it. Uh, Western University always ha also has a video on evaluated sources that is for, probably for your high school students or even for um, your adult educators. Finally, two different last things we want to look at. You have an evaluation sheet, a Word document evaluation sheet that you can use with older students. And uh, the Juanita College crap checklist is actually could be used with middle school students and to help them guide them through uh, proper website evaluation. I thank you for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out by email. My email is B as in boy, D as in dog, porter79 at gmail.com. That's B as in boy, D as in dog, porter79 at gmail.com. Love to hear from you. Thanks.